Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Simply Tech Live. If this is your first time tuning in, Simply Tech Live is a collection of discussions with business leaders, technologists, and practitioners about the evolving landscape of tech. And we also focus on topics in diversity and inclusion, women in tech, and things that make us human in the field of technology. We have a very special episode today. I'm your co-host, Derek Russell. I'm a data and AI specialist in the manufacturing enterprise operating unit here at Microsoft. I'll go ahead and kick off uh, an introduction to our guest co-host today, Greg Vigil, Industry Director for Manufacturing. Greg, how are you feeling? What are we talking about today? And can you introduce our special guest? Yeah, thanks for having me today. I'm excited for the conversation. I've had the pleasure of working with Tracy now for for the last three months and it's been a whirlwind as we've spun up this new manufacturing organization. So Tracy's been at Microsoft just over four years. She, of course, is the VP of our new enterprise operating unit focused on manufacturing, which is an exciting move as we get more closely aligned to our customers. Uh, prior to that, she ran our U.S. Um, <clears throat> services org, and then she also spent some time running our Great Lake regions. And Prior to joining Microsoft, she held a variety of leadership roles uh, at HP. So we're happy to have her on today. She's a diehard fan from the and attended University of Michigan. So Tracy, welcome. Well, thank to the you both, uh, Greg and Derek. I'm so happy to be here. It's, it's it's really awesome to have you on today, Tracy. So how are you feeling today and what is giving you energy? Well, today? any of you that know me, energy is just part of my DNA. Um, but giving me energy today is being a part of this program. I'm super excited to talk about our manufacturing OU and also happy to uh, to be talking with everybody out there. So if you have questions or something's on your mind, please feel free to post it. We'll try to address all the questions and uh, commentary through the po or through the uh, recording. Yes, this is a live discussion, so we welcome questions. We welcome some authenticity and some energy from the audience. So let's get started. I, Tracy, when you think about what the industry verticals represent here at Microsoft, what comes to mind sure. for you? You know, it, it's interesting. So manufacturing companies have been the lifeblood of this country for so many years. And honestly, I, I'm super proud of the history and the quality of products. And honestly, in so many cases, the agility and transformation that so many manufacturers showed during the onset of COVID to really pivot those production lines and produce those necessary goods required. So, you know, honestly, manufacturing is important to the U.S. Manufacturing is important to the world and it's important to Microsoft. And so, you know, what we're doing here at Microsoft is we've gathered kind of thousands of resources, pulled them all together to focus on process and discrete manufacturing, as well as high tech and aerospace to really focus on the digital transformation of our clients. And I know we've we've given a little bit of focus to uh, healthcare and uh, financial services, and now retail and manufacturing is another vertical that's been added to that to that portfolio. Uh, why are we doing this now? Like, what, what's the impetus for the market yeah, now? Absolutely. Today? Well, retail and manufacturing are new for Microsoft, as you said. FSI, healthcare, federal have been uh, vertical focuses for a while in our company, and so. Why are we doing manufacturing now? Well, there's, there's really kind of four market reasons that I want to just chat about. The first one is around the skills gap in the workforce. And, you know, the research shows that there's going to be potentially a 2 million unskilled manufacturing jobs by 2025. And so using technology to bridge that gap, reskilling the workforce and embracing technology is really part of the future. So that's kind of number one. Number two, when we think about manufacturers and the need that they uh, you need to adopt technology to be more adaptive, right? How do they look at innovation? How do they look at business agility? And the manufacturing organ, you know, plants out there are about 20 years old and still are some operating with the same business processes that they had before. So how do we help them take advantage of this digital momentum through their entire company and really look at investments in sales and marketing and supply chain? The third area is around that factory floor. And companies are spending uh, about $67 billion in robotics. That's the projection by 2025. And there's like 30 billion of uh, connected devices with each one of their own unique IP addresses. So quite frankly, when you look at this expenditure and you look at how the companies are transforming, they also need to update and transform their workflows. So we're in a data rich area with uh, era with manufacturers and we need to help them incorporate the technology 
update their plant floors and really think about opportunities to find efficiencies, to assign labor differently, uh, to balance different elements of highly complex systems and to really use data and real-time information to help make decisions. And then the fourth area that I think is super important is in 2019, we saw the highest surging activity for sourcing for North American suppliers. And we continue to see this as part of COVID today. So manufacturers should see this as a signal to deliver their best digital customer experience possible and increase their efforts towards those digital projects, building that agility, that scalability, and managing this risk. This is the time to innovate is now. So to answer your question, I guess, more directly, we really felt at Microsoft that now was the time to bring together all of our rich assets around technology and people into one organization to really address these opportunities and these issues inside the manufacturing organization. And if we address them correctly together, we can bring amazing opportunities for growth and change inside these companies. And Tracy, when you mentioned data, I, I saw a twinkle in Greg's eye light up. Um, it, we're all we're all excited about data here uh, in the manufacturing vertical. It, it, so when you think about solutions, like things that were that were packaged up, that we're offering up, that that work for us, that work for our customers, and how we partner, you know, what comes to mind? What are some high level items? And and Greg, if you could kind of come at come in at the back end of that question with for Tracy, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, I'll too. kick it off, and Greg, I'll hand it over to you. So we're really focused on on a three major areas, right? And all of them, as you said, um, Derek, really focus around data, or at least the first two do. And then the third one is a little, little different, but we want to think about it. The first one is around resiliency of the supply chain. It is amazingly important. Manufacturers have to be able to see up and down the production line. And quite frankly, when COVID hit, the visibility of downstream suppliers was an area and an issue. And so they really lost that connectivity, that visibility. So we want to help our clients look at the resiliency of their supply chain, look at local sourcing, look at ability to do shorter runs and how we can bring data to the forefront to ensure that those customers are getting the ROI that they need from this, uh, this experience. The second is around connected factories or agility of our factories. How do we start to look at the plant floor differently, connecting all the devices, looking at robotics we talked about, and then the third one is really transforming that workforce. How do we educate, reskill, and up-level the resources that are available so that we can take advantage of the technology to drive efficiencies and really kind of bridge that skills gap that, that's coming? And so we felt like these are the three areas that we want to focus on that really harness the power of data, really look to provide investment and working capital back for the companies. And we've got a story to tell, and we've got customer references to share, and we've got an ROI and a solution that's really powerful for companies to hear. So, Greg, let me hand it back over to you if you want to add some things to that. Yeah, it's interesting. So I've been in the manufacturing uh, model at Microsoft for uh, close to four years now. I spent 15 years in manufacturing on the shop floor um, and <clears throat> really grew up in manufacturing in my career. So it's interesting today when I speak with leaders from our manufacturing customers and we'll do executive briefings and ask them the question, how do you think Microsoft can help you? Most of them have no awareness that Microsoft provides some of these solutions like Tracy just mentioned. Right? They're not aware of the fact that we can actually help them connect that 30 year old piece of equipment to the cloud and start to generate data that allows them to do predictive modeling on quality control and tighten the tolerances that they have. So there's a number of areas that they're just not aware because Microsoft hasn't shown up in that same way um, to be able to help them understand the fact that we bring these strong set of solutions. So I've really enjoyed it because we can partner with those customers, whether it's connected product, right? When you think of a thermostat phoning back to the cloud and then being able to do analytics and provide a whole new level of product and service to your customers. And obviously, as Tracy mentioned, supply chain's top of mind. I think we're having a conversation every day with most of our manufacturers about how do they rethink that supply chain and microsoft's a great example we've had our our supply chain vp speak at a number of events and so when COVID was taking place because we had spent the last three years completely reimagining our supply chain we literally are having a pump terabytes of data every single day to a data lake for our supply chain they were able within hours to react and remodel where we would produce product how we would ship product 
So there's a whole host of capabilities that our customers aren't aware of. And I know with this new model, our teams are going to get closer to their customers that are going to understand their businesses much better. And we can help them transform their business, just like Microsoft's really transformed our business under Satya Nadella. Thanks for that, Greg. And we got a couple comments. So we got a good morning from Rodney Campbell. He's in our OCP organization. Iasia Brown, she's in our fast track uh, engineering organization. She's talking about, she says, the resiliency of supply chain. She's getting a lot of energy behind that. Um, Mark Sabolsky, hopefully, Mark, I didn't, I didn't butcher your last name. Uh, he asked the question, are you partnering with any of the established shop floor technology companies? I guess that's a great question. Uh, Tracy, when you think partnerships, um, what do you, what comes Absolutely. to mind? So we have deep partnerships with Blue Yonder, with uh, uh, CA, um, you know, CAI3. We've got partnerships with O9. We've got partnerships with the global SIs. And so what we try to focus on is where do we get the best um, solution for our customers with a partner, with a what we call an ISV, and how do we utilize the power of our Microsoft Cloud to be able to enable all of those technologies to, to work together? So it isn't just at the end of the day, 100% Microsoft. We partner with uh, various companies to ensure we've got the best solutions for our customers. And our customers always have input into that as well. Where do they have a comfort level? You know, Where are they using a technology that they want us to continue with? We're gonna be able to partner, bring the best of all, all resources to bear. And Derek, I'd like to add to that. Yeah. So I've, we've worked with some, you think of companies like Rockwell and PTC that have been on the shop floor for decades, right? That have really strong solutions. They're, they've bet their businesses on Microsoft, gone all in to cloud enable those solutions. So with PTC as an example, I spent about 18 months working with them with a large automotive manufacturer because they had the PTC technologies deployed. They, they um, make airbags, so quality is absolutely critical because if an airbag fails, people potentially die. So the, by Microsoft and, and PTC going in together, we were able to help them reimagine that shop floor process. And we've had them speak at events where PTC and Microsoft had, have hosted them. We did one just actually not too long ago where uh, we went and they did some tours of their facility. So these are areas where customers haven't, been aware of the fact that Microsoft's got all these deep, rich partnerships on that shop floor. Um, so it's a it's a great opportunity for us to leverage what our customers already have deployed, but bring in AI and and capabilities like that. Um, I did see Jacqueline's posted a rescaling so important. I did want to put a plug. So NAM's got a program creators wanted where <clears throat> Microsoft's um, partnering with them on this initiative to go and help drive energy and drive momentum towards manufacturing. As Tracy mentioned, there's gonna be a couple million jobs. So unfortunately with COVID, we had to delay that, but we we partnered up with them and we're looking forward to the launch that they're gonna have coming up. So again, Microsoft's deeply engaged with NAM, so we love what they're doing to help address some of these fundamental challenges that manufacturers manufacturing is having like skilling. So so we've talked about some pretty important things. We've talked about solutioning. We've talked about resilient, resilient supply chains. We've talked about uh, data, which excites me. We've talked about partnerships all the way down to the shop floor level. And now we're talking about jobs and culture. And those things are so important for us here at Microsoft. I know they're very important for you, mm -hmm. Tracy. And you being a woman VP, a woman leader of our entire organization, that's a big deal for a lot of women all over the world. What has been your experience in leadership? And why do you think having a female uh, leadership uh, foundation at some of these different organizations in manufacturing specifically, why do you think that's yeah. important? You know, it's interesting whether you know, male or female, right? You've got to come at the, the role of being a leader with empathy. And that's something, quite frankly, that's near and dear to my heart. So let me let me answer the, the question in a couple of ways. Right. The first part is that, you know, right now during COVID, we have people that are working from home. We have kids that, quite frankly, are doing schooling from home. And, and I'm no different. Right. And I, I was teasing my son and I said, please don't take me on my network. Uh, you know, when you do an online school and you have your break and you're going to game, you know, during this 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 uh, um, network uh, event and he was laughing at me but it, but it's real world things that we're all dealing with right now and so first and foremost i i think that 
coming to this new organization and we're all pressing really hard to upskill and learn and be the best we can be for our clients. But as a leader, you have to manage that success drive with a balance around where everybody's at right now, you know, where we're all dealing with, you know, can we work later at night or early in the morning? How do you give space for people to really learn and grow? And so that's something just as a leader through the years that's been important to me is just ensuring that I give people the space they need to be successful in what ways that looks like for them. So, so I think that's the first point I want to just articulate on. And that's uh, for all of us right now is, is leaning and learning in, in a different, uh, a different way as a leader. You know, second to your question, it's interesting because gender diversity really does provide benefits to organizations and the data just shows it over and over, right? And so when you think about the ability to um, to innovate, um, diversity really provides a higher return on equity. It increases the profitability. And when employees believe that their organization is really focused on inclusion, we really do report better business performance. So. What I've spent a lot of my time on is, is STEM activities and also really uh, talking to and working with early and career folks. And I want to share a couple of statistics. I, I was thinking about these when we were coming onto this, uh, this broadcast and specific to manufacturing. The impact of STEM has provided a 12 percent positive improvement in women thinking that the school systems are now encouraging them to go after manufacturing careers. And then we also have seen like an 18% improvement in women having a positive attitude towards, um, you know, female members of their family, or if you will, you know, extending that kind of advice or joining the manufacturing industry to other, other girls in their circles. And so 18% improvement in girls feeling that they have people kind of coaching them to go into the manufacturing area. And then overall, about 58% of women feel that there's a positive attitude towards female professionals in manufacturing. So do we have a ways to go, Derek? Absolutely, there's, there's no doubt about it. But if I think about my career and you know those other females that I've worked with throughout the years that are focused on both STEM activity, females in leadership, you know, we're sharing our stories, we're in creating the space for people to learn and listen, we're still learning ourselves, but Right now, I think that's the best way to continue to approach this is just being open minded and encouraging those young females to really jump into the manufacturing industry because it's going to be an exciting place to work and to thrive in their long term career. I mean, thank you for sharing that, Tracy. And I think just just the question, just your response and hearing that we're making a difference, that 12 percent, that's 12 women, up, women out of 100. That's a, that's a big increase. That's a, and that's really bringing a lot of folks closer to a career that could really help uh, themselves and their families. Um, it, so we're really talking about a lot of passion types of topics yeah. here. Um, it, it, one of the things that you've talked about very closely, Tracy, and it just so happens to be one of our uh, industry kind of scenarios uh, is sustainability. Um, you, you really enjoy sustainability. I, I think a lot of us here at Microsoft yeah. do. Can you talk about why you think that's so sure. important? for us to see. Absolutely, behind. absolutely. So, you know, when I think about it, it, again, as you said, Derek, it's an important topic for companies and it should be an important topic for individuals as well, right? Every year, the world is creating like 11 billion tons of waste. And when you think about that, we're polluting our oceans. And, and that really is, is passionate for me. I, as many of you probably have seen on LinkedIn and other stories, I'm a boater. And so the idea that we're polluting our oceans just, just really gets to me. You know, and the other thing, you know, we're producing about 300 million metric tons of plastic every year. And those plastics are used, 50% of them are used one time. So we have a problem and we need every individual and every company to be thinking about sustainability and how we leave our planet in you know many, many years to come. So the responsibility, quite frankly, for all of us to step back and, and, and make a stand. And so Microsoft has uh, committed to three things that I, I really want to talk about here today. The first one is around you know, waste, carbon, and water and energy. And, and so when we think about it for waste, um, we're addressing our own waste creation, and we focused on reusing, repurposing, or recycling our solid compost or electronics or hazardous waste. We're building these things called Microsoft Circular Centers that are gonna reuse and repurpose the servers and the hardwares that we use in our data center to provide that cloud journey for our customers. 
We have over 3 million servers ourselves and 160 data centers. And so this program that we've just initiated is going to reduce 90% of our own waste by 2025. And we're going to be waste neutral by 2030. We're going to eliminate these single use plastics in our packaging. And we're going to use technology really to improve the waste accounting. So something that really is substantial and has measurement behind it. The second piece around carbon, we've announced that we're going to be carbon negative by 2030. And we're going to remove from the environment more carbon than we've ever emitted since our founding by 2050. So these concrete steps to reduce the carbon emissions, um, we're thinking about things like, you know, eliminating diesel fueled backup, a backup power to our data centers. We've invested millions of dollars in a coalition uh, called Energy Impact Partners. And we're thinking about creative ways to use technology to transform, transform the world's energy. So more work to be done for sure, but we have the right investments and partnerships and people thinking about how we're going to do this and goals out there. And then just this week, we announced that we're going to be water positive by 2030. And a couple of the areas in that are we're going to implement some on-site rainwater collection. And then we're also use IoT smart devices for water conservation. So we've started down an important journey at Microsoft. We have concrete plans, like I just mentioned. We're willing to share those plans and what we're doing to help customers think about how you want to start your journey. And we also have a Microsoft um, calculator that's kind of in a select preview right now, really starts to look at the sustainability portions of your company and helps you measure how you're going to get the improvements that you need. So again, spend some time with us. Let's talk about sustainability. I'm super passionate about it. And I think it's something that can not only help you know our clients, but can help the world. It, it, Greg, what what are your thoughts? Like, Trace has got some some. I mean, so much passion behind that. What are you seeing with customers? And is this is this evolving? Is this becoming more important? You asking me or Greg? Uh, Greg, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So interestingly, so for me, when I in my previous career, one of the first factory tours I went to was a tire valve manufacturing facility, right? And Admittedly, I hadn't paid much attention to sustainability in, in manufacturing you know, a decade ago. Just, just wasn't something I'd ever really thought through. But I went to this facility and watched the scale and speed with which they were producing product. And all these articles I had read kind of just all of a sudden clicked. I'm like, wow, we're going to outproduce our ability to manage these manage products in the world, right? Certainly, they're all products that we need to to drive a car, to get around, to fly a plane, to visit family. But it just struck me and, and it changed my perspective, right? Because it was the first time I had really seen it and kind of understood what it meant. And so almost every one of our customers has board level initiatives on sustainability, right? Pick any manufacturer and they're going to have a committee that reports independently to the board around what customers are doing for manufacturing. So all of them are absolutely leaning in. And this is where a Microsoft's leadership in that space and showing away and making some of these bold bets under Satya Nadella and Brad Smith and things that we've announced personally make me extremely excited and proud to work at a company like Microsoft that we're thinking deeply about these and addressing them for our own company. But as Tracy said, we've got tools that are available and the technologies and tools that we bring can help our customers understand how they can reduce their footprint, right? Whether they're choosing AI to, to produce less wasteful product. Uh, we've got some great customer stories with partners like Ecolab where we're helping companies reduce their water usage. So I'm excited to have these conversation. It is one of the, the top areas we do engage with our customers on. So again, many may not think that Microsoft can help them on their sustainability initiatives, but we absolutely can. And it's going to get better. As, and it's funny because we announced all these things. And I think maybe the sales teams all of a sudden rushed our internal teams who were thinking about how to fix it for Microsoft, started creating this demand for these tools like calculators or other things so that we can help our customers. Because many of those manufacturers reached out and said, hey, what are you doing here? Can you show us the way? And I think there's going to be a great opportunity for us to, to do that here in the coming months and years. Just taking a snip away from what you said, uh, many, many may not think dot, 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 Microsoft. So, you know, getting into education and how we're educating our customers. And a lot of customers, quite frankly, quite 
frankly, are on premises. They own data centers. They're not focusing on the proprietary functions. And now we have this new era of cloud and AI. Tracy, coming over from the services organization, we know that you are very centered on educating our internal folks, employees, and also educating customers. What are some thoughts around what you're thinking about how we could be educating our customers and, and differentiating their businesses with Azure or Azure yeah. Cloud? Yeah, very, very good question. You know, if I think back, Derek, to where we started this conversation, right? Manufacturers, and they need to connect their information together to make impact. And, and today, when I think about where that data may lie, it might be in somebody's head, it might be in a disconnected manufacturing line. It might be with a supplier that we talked about that it might be further down in their value chain, right? That they don't have visibility to. So when I think about the power of Azure, for me, it all comes back to utilizing the tools and the processes and the things to, to really start to connect all the data, right? When you, when you reason over the data, you gain these amazing actionable insights that are gonna allow you to make smarter decisions. So the difference that I want to kind of point out, and I think Greg's done a good job kind of talking about where our customers are at and what they need, but the difference that Microsoft can make is really helping you on that journey. We know that it's more than just showing you a POC and throwing some, you know, some information in front of you. And we know that some of our competitors just show up with data that they have and drop that data at your doorstep and say, hey, here, I've already got you down the path. We come to every engagement and we think about, the changes that need to occur across the people, the process, and the technology to get all of those things working together to get the benefit. So when we think about the output of artificial intelligence and some of the things that can transform this, the manufacturing industry, it's really around providing an optimization of those operations. It's enabling products and services. It's allowing for safer work environments. And, and it's an exciting time to be in manufacturing because you can learn and adopt these new technologies, but you can also respond you know, to some of the changes of transformation earlier. You can look at incoming workforce and ensure they have the right skills now. You can leverage data and AI, and you can create an organizational culture that really is starting to use the data to drive decision-making. And when you do that, and you engage in a partnership, which is what we're hoping to bring and sit down with customers and have that dialogue, you know, we can all go down the journey together and the benefits are just gonna be tenfold from where manufacturers are today. So super excited with Azure, amazing opportunities with uh, with data and AI connected to the cloud and really providing manufacturers information and connectivity they've never had before. It's there, it's just disparate information, it's all yours. And it's important that you harness the power of that data that you have in a way that improves the business. Greg, what, what what are your what are your thoughts about how we're differentiating through education to to some of Tracy's points? And uh, I know we're coming up on time, so if you could kind of give a lasting uh, remark on that, that would be great as well. Yeah, so the, saw a comment in the the post. So the MTCs are here, right? So we've got these Microsoft Technology Centers where we can bring customers in, we can take them through that education. Tracy's committed to, to internally to our sales team, everyone's getting trained every week on deep, deep content in terms of what Microsoft can do in manufacturing. And so that's gonna create hundreds of people available to help their customers understand. We actually hosted a, an internal event with the Society of, of Supply Chain Professionals. And it was interesting, and I'll leave us with this. So. The people in manufacturing understand their business really well, but they don't know what they don't know, right? And Derek, you cover data and AI, right? So you understand that deeply. When you bring those two together and with some understanding of their business and the technology we bring, it's going to be a powerful force. So Microsoft fully in on educating, producing content, helping our teams understand and helping our customers understand what that bright future for manufacturing looks like. Thank you for that, Greg. And then Tracy, Last uh, last little bit from you, if you could just leave our listeners with something around what business leaders in manufacturing should be thinking about when they think about partnering with, with a, a large technology um, vendor like sure. Microsoft. You know, I'll leave you with this. You know, clearly there are several organizations to, to, to work with, but what we're looking to achieve within our U.S. manufacturing team is to really become a trusted partner. One that looks at the holistic opportunity around, like I talked about, people, process and technology. 
And we want to be that partner that builds the opportunities with you, that grows with you, that utilizes your data, doesn't bring other data, you know, doesn't, doesn't, uh, uh, you know, use your data. It is your information and your data. We want to be there to be the partner with you and empower you and your clients each and every day. So looking forward to uh, to the opportunity to uh, connect with many clients out there. Thank you, uh, Derek, for this amazing opportunity and Greg for uh, co-hosting today. I really appreciate being part of this and looking forward to uh, jumping in with our manufacturing clients down this journey.